Hi, this is Trey Pass. Sorry, my voice went <laughs> cracked for a minute. Um, hi, I'm going to do a reaction to, well, actually a review with spoilers of Stargirl Season 3, Episode 10, uh, Frenemies. This is season Chapter 10. This is called The Murderer. Okay, and this is a review again, like I said before. It's going to have spoilers in it. Um, like I said, we only have three more episodes to go for this season. Unfortunately, the show has gotten canceled by the network that bought the CW. Unfortunately, um, I'm hoping they get picked up by somebody else, but it's not looking good at the moment. I really love this show, and I uh, it's really bummed out that they canceled it. But let's move on to the actual review. Anyway, uh, last episode we ended it with a kind of a cliffhanger with the Ultra Human Eye <laughs> making an appearance when uh, Mike and Jakeem and the Thunderbolt went to investigate uh, uh, Cindy and try to find and locate her because she's been missing since the big fight. And they go to the farm, and of course the Ultra Human Eye <laughs> pops out of out of nowhere and roars at them, and they take off running. Okay, and then we begin with this episode with them running in the woods, <laughs> you know, running trying to get away. And in uh, in the mic, excuse me, Takin makes a wish, but he he wishes to make a call. And so obviously, since you've got to be very specific with the Thunderbolt, the wish he makes, there's an actual payphone that pops up, and they go on the payphone, and the payphone says you have to put you know ten cents in there. Of course, Takin doesn't have any <laughs> anything, any change in his pocket. You know, he just has some <laughs> gum that's been in his pocket way too long. And then <laughs> they you break out, and they hear the they hear the, the roar of the Ultra Humanite again, and they start taking off again. And then we uh, we cut to a, a scene at, at Beth's house where Beth's mom, who's the doctor, she's examining Rick. You know, he's been he really he got really wrecked because you know having the fight you know with Cameron's Cameron. I was gonna say his grandparents, but he actually had the fight with Cameron, and where he just disregarded Courtney at all, and that's because the hourglass he took the Eliminator thing out of it. And now he wears the hourglass, you know, like 24-7. So he's like on a permanent steroid rage. And, you know, they're telling him, and Beth is even telling him that you've been acting really different since, you know, you put, and you've been wearing an hourglass. You know, she dares him to take it off for 10 minutes. Uh, and But he won't even do that. He says, don't tell me what to do. And he kind of storms off in a huff. And everybody can tell that his parents and Beth that something's wrong with Rick. He's too hyper and too uh, angry. And at the same time, we also have uh, you know, Pat, you know, he's worried, and Sylvester, you know, a.k.a. Starman, he's back. And they're also noticing that Mike hasn't come home, him or Jakeem. They called over to Jakeem's house. Jakeem's parents thought he was going to spend the night at Mike's house. And Mike told his parents that he was going to be at Jakeem's house. So obviously they're lying and they're missing currently. So Pat is worried about that, you know, that maybe the Mark Kent's, you know, the icicles, parents have done something to them. Okay, and they decided to head over there, Pat and uh, Sylvester, without the staff. And Pat is telling them, let me handle this, you know, because you you know, you have a temper, Sylvester, especially lately, your temperature, or since you come back, your temperature has been, not your temperature, your temper has been really angry and forced. And, oh, oh excuse me, before that, before that scene happens, we see you know, Cameron's at the hospital with his grandparents. You know, of course, his grandfather's recovering and his grandmother's there saying, see, now you know the truth, Cameron. You know what you have to do, you know, do for your family, basically. And she's telling him, even though Cameron's kind of, you see that he's kind of reluctant to, uh, st you know, to start again and kind of gives Beth credit for calling her mom and actually using the her defibrillator gloves on the grandfather to make his heart start beating again. But the grandma is not having it. And she's just telling him basically, you got to do what you got to do. So he leaves. And then later, of course, you know, Pat and Sylvester go to the house, McKin's house. And of course, the grandfather opens the door. And his, uh, the grandmother is not there. She went to get some medicine for him. But he's home resting. And they talk. And Pat flat out asks him, Have you done anything to my son? Uh, and, and he basically says, No. And he goes over the history of how their, you know, their family had been persecuted and had it basically flee to America to escape persecution because of what they are. And he basically tells us, we didn't do anything to your kid, and you better leave before my grand <laughs> before my wife comes home because, you know, she's, she's you know, she's nuts. <laughs> okay. And we see also at the beginning of the episode, we also see, uh, we see the Crocs, you know, jogging through town, you know, saying everybody, they really become a part of the community. 
and stuff. You see them even saying hello to people. Even you see uh, Crusher even joking with the cop. You know, play fighting. You know, they really become part of the town and and part of the. You know, since they turn over New Leaf, they really become part of the town. You can see that, and everybody, you know, everybody knows that, and everybody kind of welcomes them. So, which is, you know, a really, yeah, nice thing for they really turn over New Leaf. You even see uh, Artemis in her room. She's like looking at colleges and stuff, and you see the whole family there going through. You know, uh, Mrs. Croc, she's baking a cake. Tigress is baking a cake. You know, you know, you know. How was I was gonna say his name. Uh, you know, the father. He's you know looking at his flyers for his uh, for his gym and just really enjoying life. You can see they're really just enjoying life as a family. And like I said, after uh, Pat and Sylvester leaves, you know, the Kent's house, we also see another scene where Barbara's at home. She's calling you know again another relative, uh, another person in town to see if they. Her, Heard of you know seeing Chakim and Mike, and she's telling us give me a call if you did. And you know she hears somebody knocking on the door, and then she goes to open up the door, and it's it's the grandpa, grandma Marquette, who's there, not you know, not with, with evil intent to just say that, okay. And her eyes light up like she's gonna freeze Barbara, attack her, but behind Barbara is a uh, tigress, and she shoots an arrow <laughs> at Marquette and tells her the, the next one won't be. You know, a warning shot. Okay, back up and leave. <laughs> so luckily, you know, she was there. Mrs. Croc, you know, Tigress was there to help Barbara. And then later we see in the episode, she tries to teach her how to use a bow, you know, a crossbow, how to, you know, and so that she has to, you know, learn how to defend herself, even though Barbara's not really that comfortable with that. And then later we see uh, the Crocs, they actually go to the Ma Kent's house and tries to tell them, listen, we, we really liked your son and stuff, but, you know, Barbara and and her and Pat and Barbara are friends now, and, and they're trying to de-escalate the situation. And they tell them, you know, think about it. And they leave, and they're not sure that the Mark, they got through the Mark Kents, but you know, they go on, and you see the Mark Kents there at the house, and they're still looking. The grandmother, especially, is looking at the, the picture of uh, her 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 you know her son and his family, and she's you know just telling her grand her, her husband that she really misses her son. She just truly misses her son. You can. Until she's she's even now after all the time she still just misses me really just you know her grief is real and and she just can't get you know she's not getting over this and also at the same time we see Courtney she goes to the um, she goes to see Cameron and and Cameron asks her and she apologized for Rick and Beth saying that they're overprotective of me and stuff and but Cameron's he says not he says. I know all that, but I want to know who killed my father. That's what I want to know. And, and, Cam, and of course, Courtney's trying to talk him down and say, it's not, it doesn't matter. Your father was trying to, uh, just, you know, hurt people and stuff. And we had to stop him. We didn't set out to do that, but it it happened. And But he says, it doesn't matter. I want to know. You have to tell me, Courtney, who did it. And, of course, we know that it was uh, Mike that you know, ran him over. <laughs> uh, uh, and, of course... Courtney's not going to give up her brother, so she she takes the blame, and Cameron tells him that tells her that he doesn't want to see her again, okay, and just walks away, and then she has to walk away, you know, until her heart is breaking, because you know she had to protect her brother, but she's at the same time, you know, she's, you know, she's mad at the circumstances that Cameron has to, you know, you know, she has to let him think that that she killed his father just to you know protect her, to protect her brother, so you know that's. A really a sad sign. And if we go back to uh, Mike and uh, Jakeem in the woods. They're running and running it, and all of a sudden they run into a trap, a snare trap that snatches them up in the air. <laughs> and you know they're screaming. And at the same time, then we see that it's actually Cindy. That Cindy actually set the trap and she cuts them down. And they're sad. You know, and she and she says, "What are you doing?" And she said, "We came looking for you." You know. We, you know, we were looking for you, and she said, and they tell her about the big, the ultra humanite, the big white ape, and and, I, and Jakeem says, I'm not that good with uh, measurements, but he's about 30 feet, which is obviously ridiculous, but uh, uh, Cindy is saying, I'm here to capture him and to prove that, you know, that, you know, that he's, he killed the gambler, rub it in everybody's face that it wasn't me that actually killed the gambler, 
Okay, so she's trying to, she's in a woods trying to set a trap for the ultra human, ultra humanite, and she tells Mike and Jakeem to go home. There's a, you know, there's a road down the way. Just go ahead and go down the road. And they hear the roar again, and they turn around, and she's gone, <laughs> just like Batman. And, and the Thunderbolt goes, man, that's just like Batman. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> and then they make another wish, and they make the proper wish this time. They wish to be back at the cafe and eating, you know, sit. Uh, sipping malt, you know, milkshakes, and you see the big, the big, pink, uh, magic, and they they actually are in the uh, cafe uh, with the milkshakes and stuff, <laughs> and then of course they go back to the, you know, they go to, we see them go to the the garage where Pat and and Sylvester are, and of course Pat is ecstatic to see <laughs> to see Mike and hugs him and asks him where, you know, where have they been, and they explain about. A big gigantic ape, and and Pat and, and Sylvester give themselves a look, like they know who they're talking about. They know exactly who they, you know, they mean about the big gigantic ape. And then later we see everybody in the house, you know, Courtney, except Rick, Courtney, Beth, Yolanda, Mike, and Jakeem, and you know, Barbara, and Pat, and Sylvester, and they're talking about, and they go through the origin of the ultra human, how he was once a scientist, and who actually. He basically put his brain in another person's body and stuff, and he, and he ultimately put his body in big gi giant ape, <laughs> and they fought him before in the past. So they go through that, and they said, "Listen, well, we're gonna have." To. And then, of course, Courtney later, Courtney says, "Listen, this is what I was talking about before that we all have to come together, you know, enemies and friends." She says, "Even the Ma Kents and everybody else, the Crocs, everybody, we have to come together to defeat, you know, the ultra humanite." Okay, we have to do that. You know, Courtney gives her a little pep speech. <laughs> That we have to. This is what we have to do. And then later we see uh, the Crocs. They're they're you know they're jogging through the town at night, and they get a call from their daughter Artemis, and she says, "Listen, I got into Nebraska. I'm going to Nebraska." And of course they're ecstatic when they hug each other, and she's going to be the first female quarterback for Nebraska. And they're hugging each other, and say, "We'll see you soon." And you see them. They start walking, and then they actually see flyers from from the gym, from the Crusher's gym, and it kind of leads them into. Uh, basically, to the uh, the uh, to the sewer, to the uh, what do you call that? The the, uh, the uh, sewer grate, and they actually uh, it's open, and it looks ominous, <laughs> of course. And and they and they know that this is like a trap to bait them there, but they still go down, go into the you know go into the base, not the basement, to the sewer. Underground, they climb down the manhole. That's what I was trying to think of the word. They climb down the manhole to the bottom of it, and they're looking. And it looks like the same place that we've seen before. And they walk down the long hallway, and, and they see all the television cameras that we've seen before. That that person, whoever that person was, was watching, you know, the whole town and stuff. And they're looking around like, what is this? What? And then all of a sudden, uh, Crusher gets stabbed with an icicle. He gets stabbed and falls to the ground, and then you see him slowly starts to freeze. And and before Tigress can react, she gets grabbed by this hooded figure, and he starts freezing her too. And he pulls off his mask, and we see instead of I thought it was going to be the Dragon King, but he pulls off his mask, and it's actually Icicle. He's alive, but you hear his voice. He says, "At least you're going to die together." You hear, him, but he says it in a real raspy voice, like he's not that well. And you see them, she falls to the ground, and they're looking at each other while they're freezing. They're slowly freezing from the inside. They're freezing. And Crusher looks at Tigress and says, I love I love you, you know, as he's dying. And she says it back to him as she's dying. And you see them just slowly freeze. And Icicle slams to the ground and explodes them, their bodies up. This explodes their bodies. And that's how it goes off with the cliffhanger that we now we know that the hooded figure that's been watching everybody is actually high icicle. He actually somehow he pulled himself together, but it looks like he's still maybe he's not fully formed yet, that he's not all the way healthy because his voice sounds real raspy. So I don't know if he, he managed to pull himself together, but not all the way or something. Something's wrong. He's sick and maybe he needs uh, maybe his maybe his uh, grandparents powers to help him fully form or maybe even his son. Cameron's power to heal him fully because he, he seems like he's a little he looks a little sick uh, but he still has, obviously he still has his ice powers and that's how it goes off 
And uh, that was a shocker to me. That was a nice ending because I was expecting, I, I, I swear I thought it was a Dragon King for some reason. But now we, we are to assume that uh, this Ultra Humanite is working with the Icicle. We assume that's what the, what what's happening, and again, that's an assumption on my part because because we have we haven't seen them together, you know, icicle. But even though Sylvester seems to think that's the person that jumped them, and uh, by when he was by the gambler's trailer, and remember that the destruction of the uh, of the gambler's uh, uh, ca uh, ca that cabin, his uh, trailer, that was had to be by somebody really strong. So, like the ultimate humanite, like a gorilla would rip the, that basically ripped the, uh, the uh, his uh, trailer apart. So that's probably the ultimate humanite. And somebody watching that, and it obviously was Icicle. So uh, I'm assuming that they're working together. Okay. And like I said, we have three more episodes to go. So we'll see where they go with this. And we know what Jordan's goal is probably revenge. Although from the preview that I saw, it looks like Courtney and him knows that Icicle back, and then we see him. In the preview, he, he goes back to that company that Barbara works at, and everybody's hugging, kind of hugging him, like happy that he's back, and and he's saying that he's changed or something. So I don't know if he's gonna be trying to play it off like he's that he wasn't the one that's doing that. So he may be trying to play it off and stuff. And we see the preview that that you know Cameron sees his father and says, "You're back, Dad. You're back." And so we'll see how this plays out. Exactly. That he, you know, we know that he wants his revenge, and I feel so bad for Artemis because just when she had the biggest success of her young life, that she's got into college and stuff, with probably with a full ride, her parents get murdered. Uh, that's just, I feel so bad for her. That's just, that's devastating. And again, I'm still pissed off that the show got canceled because this is such a good show, and I know they already knew. They kind of got a hint that maybe the show is going to be ending, so they they said they filmed two different endings just in case. The show did get canceled because they did get a heads up that the CW might be sold. So and the person and the person that bought it might cancel it, which they did. Uh, so they filmed a, a proper ending to the show. Although, like I said, I pray that somebody else picks the show because I just love the characters too much and it's such a good show, it really is. And I hate that they cancel it. But anyway, let me know what you think of this episode ten of Star Girl season three, episode ten called The Murderer. Okay which we know now is Jordan, especially in this episode, he murdered uh, Tigress and uh, the Sportsmaster. So, um, and we assume that he's the one that sent Ultra Humanite to murder uh, the gambler. So he's the murderer. Okay, so anyway, um, let me know what you think. Feel free to leave comments down below. I have links to my social media in the description box, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I also have a link to my other channel, Bob Using the Pains. You check that out as well. Also, I have a link down below to my patron. I want to say a special thank you to my patron. Okay, I have two patrons now. Follow the link below to the patron. Check it out, which is only $5 a month. I have tons of unedited content on there, a bunch of Marvel shows, a bunch of DC shows on there. I got all four parts of Zack Snyder's Just League. I got um, uh, The Boys Season 3 on there as well. Follow the link below and check out all the t all the uh, TV shows that have react unedited reactions on. Check it out. And also, please give this video a thumbs up. It helps the channel, and I truly appreciate it. Also, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so you know when I upload new content to this channel. And this is Trey Pass, just saying so long. Take care.